Hi, my name is Eric Johnson, and I'm a Senior Developer Advocate for Serverless at AWS. This video is a part of a series that covers the AWS SAM CLI. In this video, I discuss the SAM build command. The SAM build command processes your AWS SAM template, application code, and any applicable language-specific files and dependencies. SAM then copies build artifacts in the format and location expected by subsequent steps in your workflow. You specify dependencies in a manifest file included in your application, such as a requirements.txt for Python or package.json for Node. While SAM has the ability to process builds for each runtime as well as custom builds based on make files, this video will be dedicated to runtime builds and custom builds will be covered in a separate video. Before I get started, to run this and any of the other examples in this series, you will need to have the AWS SAM CLI installed. For instructions on installing the SAM CLI, follow the install SAM link listed in the comments. All right, let's get started. In my first example, I'm going to use SAM init to create a simple Python project. If you're not familiar with the SAM init command, be sure to catch the SAM init video in this same series. Okay, now that my Python app is created, I change directories into the application root. This example has one Lambda function and the code for that function is in the hello world folder. Also in this folder is a requirements.txt file for managing the dependencies of this Lambda function. If I open the file, I see that this Lambda function requires the requests package. Looking at the Lambda function code, I can see that this Lambda function returns an object with the message hello world in the body. If I invoke the Lambda function locally, the function returns with a 200 and my hello world message. However, on inspecting the code closer, I can see that all references to the request package are commented out. I will uncomment these lines, and now my code checks for my public IP and prints it in the return object as well. I invoke the Lambda function again, and this time it fails due to the missing dependencies. At this point, I have several options available to me. One option is to use Lambda layers, but I'll be covering that in another video. So I could go through and install and manage the dependencies in the root of my Lambda function folder using pip, Doing this, I now have the request dependency and all of its dependencies downloaded to the Lambda function folder. If I invoke the Lambda function now, the Lambda works fine. While this process works, what happens when I need to manage 30 Lambda functions this way? Do I continually manage the dependencies manually? Another option is to use SAM build. To demonstrate, I will delete the dependencies and set the application back to where it was. Now that my Lambda function folder is back to just the code file and dependencies manifest, I return to the root of the project, where the template.yaml file is, and run SAM build. I now have a new directory called .aws SAM. If you're trying this at home and do not see the directory, make sure that your IDE is set to show hidden files. Inside of the .aws SAM directory is a directory called build, and within that is a template.yaml file and a directory called hello world function, which is based on the logical name of the Lambda function in the same template. Expanding the hello world function directory, I see that the lambda function code and requirements file have been copied over and all the dependencies have been installed into this directory. Everything I need to invoke the lambda function is now here. Now, if I go back to my terminal and run sam local invoke from the root of the application, what happens? The invocation works. But wait a minute, looking at my original code structure, I see that the dependencies are not present. How is this working? One thing to understand is that SAM build affects how commands like SAM local and SAM deploy work. Let me explain. When SAM local invoke or SAM deploy is called, SAM first looks for the .aws SAM folder. If the folder exists and the template.yaml file is present, then SAM local considers that the root of the application and invokes or deploys from there. If not, then SAM looks to the original template.yaml file as the root and works from there. When developing and debugging, this is important to understand. So here are a couple of tips to save your sanity. First off, never edit the code in the .aws SAM build folder. It gets overwritten with each build. Second, if you have run SAM build and then update the original code, the changes will not be reflected until you either run SAM build again or delete the .aws SAM directory. When using SAM build with languages like Python or Node, there isn't any compiling going on. SAM build is just downloading the dependencies and preparing artifacts. However, what if I need to work with a compiled language like Java, Go, or .NET Core? 
No problem, Sam has me covered. For this example, I'm going to use a Go 1.x runtime. Using Sam init, I create a new Go serverless application and change into that directory. The first thing I do is refer to the readme.md file to verify the requirements. For all SAM applications, AWS SAM CLI, Docker, and the AWS CLI are required. Additionally, for Go development, Golang must be installed and configured on my machine. Luckily, because I'm using AWS Cloud9, Golang is included by default. To test this, I enter SAM build, and I can see the build taking place. The difference in this build from my previous Python build is that the Go modules builder process is being invoked. This means that Sam is calling on the native build tool for Go to compile the Lambda function and then copies the resulting binary into the artifacts directory. If I look in the .aws sam forward slash build forward slash hello world function directory, I see the Go binary file. Just like Python, I can run sam local invoke and get a 200 response. Look, it works. So far, we've been building single Lambda functions at a time. Sam can also build multiple functions as well. Back in my Go example, I will copy the hello world directory and create a secondary directory called goodbye world. I update the Sam template to include a second Lambda function and then change the code so I can differentiate between the two. Running Sam build again, I now have two artifact directories under the .aws sam forward slash build directory, one for each of the functions I have built. I can test each of them using sam local invoke and then the logical name of the function. In the first one, I get hello and my IP address. In the second, I receive goodbye and my IP. These both appear in the response object. When using SAM build, there are multiple flags that can be passed to set values and override configuration settings. A full list of these options is found in the SAM build documents linked in the description and here on the screen. However, I want to take a moment and demonstrate the power of the use containers option. For this demonstration, I use SAM init to create a Ruby 2.7 application and keep to the hello world template. I then change to the application directory and run SAM build. For a moment, all looks well. Then I get an error. Because I am not a Ruby developer, I do not have Ruby configured on my machine past the default configuration. I could spend some time and try to get a local environment working, or I can use an Amazon Linux container to build my code and dependencies. I choose the latter. This time, I run SAM build with the use container flag. With this option, Sam uses an Amazon Linux container to compile the code, then passes the results back to the artifacts directory in my application. If my machine does not have the proper container, then Sam downloads the latest image as needed. Now that my code is built, I can use Sam local invoke to test my Lambda function, and we have a successful response. By using the use container flag, I am able to ensure that any compiling is done on the appropriate architecture for the execution environments used in the Lambda service. Depending upon the runtime, this can be an Amazon Linux or AL or Amazon Linux 2 or AL2. For more information on how runtimes map to execution environment operating systems, read the Migrating to AL2 blog linked here. One caveat on the use container flags is that it's not compatible with all runtimes at the moment. However, our development team is working to add more compatible runtimes. This has been an overview of the AWS SAM CLI SAM build command. In this session, I covered how SAM build works with non-compiled and compiled languages. I also covered how SAM build affects SAM local utilities and SAM deploy. And we talked through utilizing containers to reliably build compatible applications and dependencies for Lambda functions. For more videos in this series, visit the Serverless Land YouTube playlist listed here. And for more content like this, visit serverlessland.com. Once again, my name is Eric Johnson. You can find me on Twitter at EDJGeek. I hope you have enjoyed this because serverless for everyone.